Hi guys! To see what I ate today eating a low FODMAP vegan and to see how I'm treating this nasty head cold that I have right now, keep watching! Unfortunately, I have the worst head cold today. My throat is killing me, I'm coughing, I'm exhausted, my head hurts but I wanted to get this video together for you guys and show you how my vegan low FODMAP eating plan is going. And I have to tell you, I am feeling so much better. The bloating is going down, the pain is so much better, and I am following low FODMAP and vegan. This book is amazing. And low FODMAP is for people that are having digestive problems, IBS. I was actually diagnosed with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which gives you pretty much the same symptoms as IBS. And you do not have to be a vegan to eat low FODMAP. So I will link a bunch of books below that can give you some great ideas. Or you can actually even just Google um, like say you wanna eat some vegetables, you can just Google low FODMAP vegetables or is a tomato low FODMAP, if that makes it easier for you. This book really gives you some great ideas if you are vegan and all of this food will help your belly not hurt anymore. Oh, so I'll show you what I'm taking for this awful cold. I'm trying to only put natural products into my body to boost up my immune system. So I'm doing my Arabinogalactins. This is IAG. And I do a tablespoon in the morning and a tablespoon at night. And I mix it in a little glass with my organic white grape juice. So I have that in the morning and at night. And I take Echinacea and I take one in the morning, one at night, and these products will help boost your immune system when you're sick, or even if you think you're getting sick, they're the greatest thing to take. And even though I totally feel like crap right now, it was worth the reason that I got sick. We watched my granddaughter this past weekend and for two days, and we had so much fun. But the poor little thing was like, snots were coming out of her nose and she didn't feel good. And she just toughed through it. She just didn't care. I kept handing her a tissue. She'll be two years old, October 29th. And I kept handing her a tissue and she would just wipe the boogers all over. Oh, it was so bad. But she's a trooper and she kept playing and she was happy. So I have to definitely tough it out if we have the same sickness. So for my congestion, I'm using this Nature's Right, R-I-T-E, Sinus Relief, and this is for bacteria, fungus, and virus. And it's all natural, and it actually brings the level of bacteria down in your sinuses. So I've been doing that, and a little bit here and there, I've been spraying with the chloroseptic for my throat. So as far as what I've been eating lately for breakfast is fresh pineapple. And I'm actually gonna cut this up on camera because my daughter had just said that she didn't know how to cut a pineapple. So I'm gonna show her and any of you who don't know how to cut a pineapple and I might be doing it wrong. This is just how I do it.
and that's it. Then I cut it into little chunks. Then I store it all in these little containers in the fridge and breakfast is served. So now I'm gonna eat a few chunks of pineapple and some grapes. Either red or green grapes is what I've been eating every morning until I feel comfortably full. And then I start drinking lots of water. So I stop eating dinner around nine o'clock at night because I had to start taking thyroid medication. I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is hypothyroidism. So I take that medication right before I go to bed, which the time kind of varies, but I know that if I stop eating at nine that I will have at least four hours of no food before I take my medication. So by the time I eat breakfast, it's been about 16 hours and I'm not starving or ravenous, but I'm definitely ready to eat and ready to hydrate. So for lunchtime, I have been living on homemade hummus. One of the things that I was so bummed about when I learned about the low FODMAP diet was that I could not eat store-bought hummus anymore and I absolutely lived on it. So when I got the book, Low FODMAP and Vegan, there was a hummus recipe in the back. And what I did is I kind of just tweaked it. And sometimes I use it as a salad dressing and I add extra water, or sometimes I don't add any water, or just like a little, an ounce of water. And I do it like as a thick dip to dip my veggies. So I will show you today how I've kind of tweaked the recipe to get as much nutrients in it as possible. And it is low fat bath and safe for your belly. So first I use spring water and I am the worst messiest cook ever. So go ahead and laugh at me. I laugh at myself, but I really don't measure anything. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I just pour, I don't even know how much water that is. You know what, I'll measure it for you. So it's about three quarters of a cup of water. So I put that in first and with my bullet, you definitely want to put the more watery stuff on the bottom because when you flip it over, I tried this before, it all gets stuck. The chickpeas get stuck in the bottom. So start with all the watery stuff first. Then I'm going to use a tablespoon of my organic peanut butter like a heaping tablespoon. It's really probably two tablespoons. I told you I don't measure. So you can really tweak this recipe however you want. You can add more fat into it. You can add more chickpeas. You can add more of whatever you want to change the flavor or consistency. Then I use my sesame tahini and I do about two tablespoons. This is a little bit more watery. Then for extra nutrients, I use my nutritional yeast flakes and I get these on Amazon in this giant tub. I'll link all this below for you. And I do like four heaping tablespoons. Next, I squeeze two whole fresh lemons and I only squeeze it into this little container so I can pick the seeds out and don't end up dumping them in. Then I use Celtic sea salt, which is good for you, unlike table salt. And I love salt, so I do like a big pinch of Celtic sea salt. And another thing that is not allowed on the low FODMAP eating plan is any kind of garlic except for garlic infused olive oil, and it tastes just like regular garlic. So I'm going to use a tablespoon of this. And I'm going to use one can of organic lentils and one can of 
organic garbanzo beans or chickpeas, same thing. But the key to make them low FODMAP is to rinse them super, super, super well. I rinse them for like two minutes with cold water in the sink to make sure that they are completely clean. And that's it. Now, like I said, you can change the consistency. You can add more water to make it a nice creamy salad dressing. The way that this is gonna come out is more thick. Not super thick, but you can use it as a dip or a dressing. So this, I'm using my Ninja, and this is the biggest container that it comes with. Put that on, and I shake it just a little to get the water down a bit. Put it in there. My husband said that I should do this in the food processor. I just don't wanna pull out that big giant thing and I'm patient enough to do it this way. Okay, so I got everything cleaned up while it was blending and this is the final result. It's nice and thick. Then I just take a spatula and pour it into my container. And that's it. Now I just cover it up and store it in the refrigerator and wait until it gets cool. And here's my lunch. I use baby carrots. Baby carrots don't upset my stomach at all. I could eat a lot of them. I just started adding in raw broccoli, but only like a tiny bit, like these little one, two, three, four, five, like tiny little pieces and one leaf of romaine lettuce. So I'm trying to get my system more used to having the roughage. Um, for some reason, the carrots are fine on my stomach and I can really eat as many of those as I want. I'm gonna go eat my lunch and I'll be back when I eat again. I'm going to have a snack of So Delicious Dairy-Free Coconut Milk Alternative. And my favorite one is the vanilla. And it looks just like regular yogurt. And then I put a ton of organic blueberries in there. And then as I keep eating it, I just dump more and more blueberries until I get to the bottom. I'm gonna go chow down now. Now for the next 90 minutes, I am going to go relax on the PEMF machine. And my husband brings it home for me every weekend. And it has helped so much with my scar tissue pain and just helping me feel better, my digestive issues, my back pain, my neck pain, everything. This machine has really changed my life. So I am headed there now. I will show you how it works. So this is my office. I did another video when I was setting up my office and I've changed quite a few things. One of the best things that I did is get this giant monitor. I absolutely love it. You can see how big it is next to the laptop screen, which I have wired to the monitor and like that's my website let's just pretend I have makeup on today okay so let's just pretend that's what I look like today <laughs> don't you wish you could just wake up and put a mask on and have your makeup done so I am like sticky obsessed post-it note obsessed and here I have my reminder September 30th I'm going to email and choose the new do prize winner. So if you guys haven't already entered, look on my channel and enter the skincare giveaway. It is such awesome products. So I use my exercise ball to sit on instead of my computer chair because it helps my back so much. 
So most of the day I'm sitting on the exercise ball. So this is the PEMF machine that hubby brings home every week from his practice. So this is what it looks like. And I'm going to set it for 90 minutes and level five for me. So I lay on this pad and I put these paddles on my belly or anywhere that is really hurting me the most that day. It worked so good on my knee. I had blown out my knee a few weeks ago and I did it for a few hours and I felt so much better. So I'll show you how I get all situated. And I keep cranking it up. You hear that tapping? That's the electricity and the magnets exercising my cells and healing my body up all the way. Okay, I'll see you guys in 90 minutes. I have to show you guys, can you see how my body is shaking on this machine? Exercising those cells. So I'm making some of my teamy relaxed tea that I drink Every day, I love this tea. It's all natural ingredients. So you just need one teaspoon. And I also got this tea meat tumbler, which I love. I'll link everything down below. I even have a coupon code for you guys if you wanna try out this tea, or you can also get the tumbler. Then I use organic ground cinnamon and put a little bit of that in there. Add the boiling hot water. And then you put the little strainer on so the tea can't come through it. Screw the top on. And it's ready to go. And you can use the same tea like three more times. I'll just come in and keep adding hot water. So this will last me all day. And my husband just got home from Whole Foods and he always brings me a little vegan treat from there. And he got me oh, this delicious ginger cookie, totally vegan. So I am going to eat this cookie and go have my tea. Um, at my computer, chowing down on my nuts and seeds. This is raw almonds, peanuts, and sunflower seeds. I've almost ate them all and I forgot to film it, so I caught it right at the end. So for dinner tonight, I am going to have an Orgain Organic Nutrition Protein Shake. And this has 16 grams of protein. This one is in the smooth chocolate. And I'm going to have a Thrive Go Macro Bar. This is Ancient Seed Superfood Nut Bar. And the ingredients are grown, not made. And this one is chocolate peanut butter chip. And these are both low FODMAP. So as you can see, I don't really eat a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I kind of snack about six times a day. That definitely helps with the pain and bloating in my stomach. The food will digest much easier if you're eating small meals throughout the day. Just make really healthy choices. The cookie is not something that I do very often. I just wanted to let you know what I was truly eating today. So some of the other things that I normally eat are mandarin oranges, and these are in 100% fruit juice. And I make sweet potato in these little chunks and I use olive oil spray on a baking pan and I put pepper, Celtic sea salt, and that's it. And then I bake them in the oven or in my toaster oven on like 400 degrees for about 45 minutes and I like them really crispy. Another thing that I will eat is I make 
peanut butter and jelly on rice cakes, but I make them super healthy. So these rice cakes are Quaker lightly salted rice cakes and they are gluten free. And the only ingredients in here is whole grain brown rice and salt, that's it. So I'll take a rice cake and I will use my organic peanut butter and my organic strawberry spread. And there is no high fructose corn syrup in this. So I'm all done eating for the day. I actually did not end up eating that Thrive Bar because I feel kind of full. Probably that giant cookie you brought me home. Vegan ginger snap. <laughs> Yum. So now we're just chilling. We're gonna watch a movie and it's what is this basic. called? Ben and Jerry's Almond Caramel Crunch. Oh my God, so good. She gets two bites. Dear, I don't need, I'm so full that I have to have a bite. It is dairy-free, vegan, delicious. This is my cheat day dessert. Yeah. Cheat meal. All right, you guys, so I hope this video helped you think of some foods that you can eat and not have a belly ache. Good night. Have a good night. <laughs>